Hello, uh, welcome to this month's devlog. Um, it's a little bit late, I have been sick, um, so there's going to be a bit less to show than normal as well. Um, but I have put some other kind of neat GIFs and images and things like that into the um, itch blog post link that is in this video description. Um, feel free to take a look at that, it's stuff that I don't talk about here in the video. Um, but uh, what we're going to talk through today is largely related to the Rubble Ruins region, which I have finally been able to uh, sit down and work through through this past month. Um, it's pretty much level design complete. It is not fully decorated yet. Uh, so we're in a decorated room here. Um, but uh, I'm just kind of getting the last playtester feedback before I lock in things and start to properly uh, decorate every single room. Um, it's about close to 50 rooms in the entire region and um, a good division of like um, kind of subsections of regions as well, uh, which has been really exciting to do, make them feel different, adding in lots of different arenas and stickers and puzzles and um, we've got our boss fight back in the game, which is great, our first boss fight. Um, so I'm going to talk you through some different things. And I think first, um, I just want to show you a little bit of the, um, uh, the, the level design like decoration process. Um, I'll show you the same room here that we're in. Um, and uh, I'll give you a little clip of the old ruins from back in the day as well. So what I've got here is the same room that we were just in. Uh, this is how it looks before decoration. Um, it's basically just purely walls and a flat uh, purple floor. It's like the color of the region. Um, there's a slope here that's broken. Don't mind that, it's still on the two fix list. So if I scroll down and I click the level editor here, um, I've shown this before, but it's basically going to load a bunch of adjacent space and um, that kind of just helps me connect things together. There's this little like kind of dotted thing here that um, I use to kind of tell what is two tiles out from the edge before it starts to cut into other things. Um, generally speaking, it gets problematic if you, like this is wrong, if you walk into this room, you're gonna walk uh, into this wall from transitioning. So I'll have to remove that actually, which I'll quickly do now, cool. Um, so I'm going to switch into path mode here, and I've got a couple of um, tiles that are dedicated to this region. Um, one of them is called Ruins Jag, uh, which is just a, I don't know, these things don't need real names. Uh, it's just, it's got a jaggedy edge. That's all it is. It's like kind of a faded blue. Um, I've got one that is Dirty Cobbles that works like this. And I've got this one Ruins Tile where I start to draw it and it's similar to the Ruins Jag, but it has these like kind of tile shapes that show up. Um, and I don't love the look of this one yet. I think I need to adjust it a bit, make it a little bit less consistent, but that's all stuff I can do in the future. So um, I'm able to actually layer over two levels of these kind of decorative tile sets. So I'm going to start with uh, doing some path tiles that will be kind of the overlay. This south section goes into kind of a city-like area, um, but most of this is like fairly inhabited, so I think I want it to feel like um, there's lots of paths around kind of thing. Um, which hopefully is feeling like the case. I usually just kind of fiddle around with these things for a bit until they feel okay. Uh, yeah, that feels about right. Um, Maybe give some space for these things to connect here as well. Uh, so that's kind of like the top layer. Um, I'm going to switch to the other one for Ruins Tile and hold, uh, I think it's Control while I do this. And if I'm holding Control, then it's going to draw this underneath the, the top layer like you can see there. Um, I'm only going two layers deep on this, but even two really helps for, for this type of thing. So I'm going to try and fill out, like this area was like once kind of a building shape. So I want to fill it out like that. Um, and then also fill out the tiles here, kind of going into this city bit. Um, maybe in between here as well, just very lightly. Um, although I don't know, I don't love that. Uh, 
Uh, I'm getting caught up in small details here. It shouldn't, shouldn't really matter too much, so I'll tweak that later. Um, and then for the ruins, Jag. For some of these things, if it's like by the water, I want it to be marshy for a different region, but I've actually found with this um, blue jagged thing, with the type of region that it is, it kind of makes the most sense to just kind of have these like crisscrossing diagonal paths almost. Like I do do specific things in, in some areas, but um, I think this kind of gives this sense that there's like burn marks across the land kind of thing. Yeah, we're ruining the, the bit of tile that was there. That's fine. Um, and I won't put it in here because in here is uh, kind of the tiley area. That's pretty much good enough. Like I can tweak that certainly, but um, I don't. I don't need to. Is kind of the main thing. Um, I can always come back and do that later. And for the time being, it's communicating what it needs to, which is like burny, jaggy marks. Um, so let's pop open the ruins group, and I want to put down a few trees. They're going to be like procedurally generating their type randomly. Actually, I should put that outside the house. I shouldn't put anything inside what was once a house here. Um, it's probably good. And could I put one here? I could. I don't really like that being vertically lined up. Um, let me grab the scrubbling layer, um, which are these kind of tiny little um, versions of those trees. And... Uh, Maybe pop. I don't think I want to put any down in here because these stones need to have space to move around. They're like physics objects like anything else. Um, yeah, maybe put, put one or two little ones over here. Uh, put one up here because I don't want to put anything in these two spaces by the edge of the screen. Um, I try to have like not a lot of logic, but a little bit of like an underlying, like this bit is, um, there wouldn't be the little trees growing here because there's the tiles type thing. Um, and I'd like to have more decorative things. I hope I haven't already said that, but I'm going to place some small little um, bits of like calcified stone here and there. That's hard to see like on this level editor because of the little anchor that is in the center of an object. Unfortunately, I'll just make it a little hard to do this, but um, I'm just kind of clicking through here and there. If I had more types of this thing, I would put down more types. Um, oh, and the last thing is scorch mark. I'd like to put down a couple, that's uh, too close, a couple scorch marks to uh, show like where the lightning burns have hit. Um, that's feeling pretty good. If I have more um, decorative objects, I might come back and drop in one or two more here. I feel like a chunk of wall piece would be nice of this like constructed stone wall. Um, but otherwise, uh, I can just click anywhere out of my level editor tool, and it's going to uh, kill all the views of the neighboring rooms and save this and you can see where it just kind of trails off outside the space and that doesn't matter because you don't see that in the game. Um, yeah, so that's this room done and that's what you've seen at the start of this video. So here's a piece of this region from the last uh, public demo which is over a year old at this point. Um, and it's the old art style, it's the old style of walls, um, but also there just aren't those decorative elements. So you can tell that this is like kind of a messed up area. We've got some clouds, we've got some, uh, you know, the music's a little bit creepier here. There's big, huge pits. Um, it's clear that this is like some kind of ruined building that this person's in and the dialogue helps sell it. But ultimately, um, this is not very well decorated. Uh, I've always wanted to have uh, better decorations for this kind of thing and it just hasn't um, made sense to prioritize that for a long time. So uh, we'll flip to the modern version. <laughs>
and I think it's just kind of fun to show some before and after of uh, how a room like this is looking and how it starts to kind of come together with its own visual style that's a bit distinct from kind of just flat purple like the old style was. Although I'm realizing this uh, I'll hear this peanut is looking the wrong way. Buddy. Buddy. Where's your face? Buddy. All right, seems to want to look up. That's okay. <laughs> We're going to move on from here. So I'm in a challenge room here, um, and it's introducing a couple of different things that I want to show. So first of all, I think the most obvious thing is um, I've created these turret um, enemy types. It's more of like a obstacle or hazard than it is a true enemy. It can't be killed. It can't be hurt. Um, it just fires kind of a standard bullet projectile. And I can set these up for uh, level design where they're going at blue, you have to avoid them, or they're destroying obstacles the same way that um, your own shots can, or they're hitting a switch the same way that your own shots can. Um, I can adjust the timings on them really easily and have them face any direction. So it's really fun to just like be able to put one up here and have it repeatedly shoot a switch. Um, so as to cause these magic bridges to be turning on and off as the switch is uh, fired, like an automatic timed way. So a lot of this room is about, um, you need the dash ability to get to it um, and to cross some of this section. That uh, certainly does help to have it, although I think technically you can just walk across the whole thing other than right over here. Um, so before I give it a shot, I'm also gonna talk about these tiles that are floating in the void here. Actually, quickly, I should say, um, this is from the, the Thin Walls debacle that uh, I'm going to talk about in a little bit. Sorry that these uh, slopes look a little bit janky. That's not going to stay. Okay, so these, I'm calling them crumble tiles. And you can see when I stand on one, they shake for a moment, and then they disappear. Uh, and then they respawn a little bit. That's a pretty standard like platforming type of uh, mechanic. Um, there's also this type here, which disappear almost instantly, uh, and you will fall through if you just try and walk across them. Now these do not um, despawn when you use the dash. Um, you're like going so fast that you're not stepping very heavily. Um, so this is a section where you will need to kind of walk across these crumble tiles and then dash and then walk and dash and try and kind of time everything just right to get to this star down here. You can also brute force this. I've seen people do that. I'm going to give it a try doing it live. If I can't do it, that's fine. I can usually uh, get this one. So it's kind of like a trick of standing in the right place on these tiles before um, you can kind of see how long it's going to be until the switches fire by looking up here. So something like standing on here and waiting as long as you can, or waiting as long as you can to even get on that while the switches change and then moving forward. Um, I'll just eat myself into the void again quick to show that if I dash, the tiles that I dashed across don't actually uh, shake and go through that whole process. I'm trying to do the second section here, and without dashing, you see I basically immediately just fall into the, uh, these thin ones. And I don't know about the visual look of these. Um, I did them pretty quickly, and I don't think they quite match the visual design of the rest of the area. But that's okay, it's really easy to redo them, and I'll probably do that at a later time. So dash, dash, wait, dash. Take as long as I can to uh, wait this out. If you try and rush down the whole thing, you don't have enough time. And nab a little star here. You've got a shortcut back to the uh, start of the room. OK, so I'm going to talk to you about uh, the thin wall dilemma that I've been having. So when I say a wall, I'm referring to you know things like this that are obviously a wall, but also tiles like this. Um, anything that's got collision that you can't walk through, can jump on top of, and so on. Um, I really like the look of these walls here for the kind of structure of this area being thinner and not uh, not quite so chunky. Um, you can see I can like walk into a building here and. Uh, show the thickness of the wall and how there's not really a lot of door space to get through here. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to do that. I had them drawn, I had the collision done, I had them implemented, and I just ran into too many technical difficulties. Um, so areas like this, I wanted to feel a bit claustrophobic. This is like the, the old city region of the ruins. 
and it feels a little too claustrophobic now. I might remove some of these tiles to open it up a little, but um, I'll show you how it looked like before and why that was unfortunately too problematic. Okay, so uh, here I am in the same room. As you can see, I'm over here and the walls are thinner, which generally seems to look okay like this, but you're gonna notice a problem. I'll walk through here. If I go south too close to this wall, I'm behind it and behind it, and I am in front of it, slash standing on the side of the front of the wall. Uh, so basically there's a problem with the grid size of these tiles versus um, like the grid size of the game, so to speak. So tiles like this uh, are in a 32 by 32 grid. Um, even if they kind of visually look different because of the height thing, that's what the actual base size is at the, the foot of a tile. And that's technically true for these as well, except they're so thin that you can stand within that 32 by 32 space. And with the way that sorting works for the art, so right now I'm sorting behind this art and now I'm sorting in front of it. Um, it's based on kind of the northmost position of a tile. So you never notice this kind of problem when I use a tile that matches the proper like 32 by 32 grid. You just won't because I cannot stand uh, see buddy I, I cannot stand inside the space of this wall if I go left um, but I can stand inside the space of, of that tile if I go left like here um, be better if I could stand on the north side actually here's here's what I mean better so I'm standing north of these tiles and as far south as I can go I cannot get inside the space of these tiles but I can't do that for these ones because they're collision area is smaller. It's only eight pixels instead of uh, 32. So I've, I've tried to make this work for a while. I like the thinner look more for these types of structures, but ultimately um, the level editor setup that I have for creating these kind of tall scenes and making the height system work is really essential. Like it's not just handy, it's mandatory for how I make this work. And um, I'd have to do just a huge amount of work to try and support this. There's not really that many structures in the game that would need this this thin style. So um, it is unfortunate, but um, I'm going to make the thicker style work. Uh, I just don't think it's worth the effort to try and force this to fit. Um, is what it is, unfortunately. Um, you know, we'll miss the thin walls, but uh, what can you do? Sometimes you hit restrictions and you just try and make it work. All right, and the last thing I want to show you today is the uh, new arena for the Waking Fossil boss fight. Uh, this already is in the demo on the itch page. Um, it was added April of last year, so it's a little bit old. Um, it's taken a lot of time to redo. There's some stuff in the itch blog post that's in the video description about kind of why that was. So I've only just really rehabilitated this boss. And one of the changes I made to it, uh, which I'd always wanted to happen from the start, is that getting to it is only half of challenging it for this region. Um, it is harder to find now. There'll be telegraphing to kind of help you get there, but um, still kind of like an intentional challenge around finding this location. And that's half of it. And the other half is retrieving a key item from elsewhere in the region. Once you've done both of those things, excuse me, both those things, you can use the key item on this uh, machine here to basically lock yourself in and properly start the fight. Um, so I'm going to, uh, I guess, transition to, to music here. Um, I'll, uh, I'll show you a little bit of the start of that fight. Um, you will see a, a bit of lag from the problem I talked about in the itch blog post, still working on that. Um, and then I'll kind of finish off with a a uh, new soundtrack that I did this month, and um, hopefully a lot more to show next month when I am uh, not sick and have more time to just focus on content, content, content. Um, thanks for listening, watching, whatever, hanging out, um, and I'll switch over to that and see you next time.